Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Photo Brigade podcast. I'm Robert Kaplan. Uh, today, we have Peter Berberian, photo industry professional. New, New York photo industry professional. That's what we're I calling you today. Yeah. <laughs> so before we get into your world, Peter, I just want to give a few quick shout outs. Uh, first and foremost, thank you to Adorama for allowing us to host the podcast here in their event space. Uh, check them out at uh, adorama.com slash events. Um, also, thank you to uh, Canon Professional Services for uh, your generous support over the, the last year. Same with Temba Bags and uh, Rode Microphones for these uh, beautiful microphones. Um, so yeah, let me, let me get this going to your images, Peter. So Great. Peter, welcome. Thank uh, you. I, we're, st we're just going to have this in the background for, for now, that's, but this is a that's nice fine. photo of you as a uh, Boy Scout. That is a nice photo of me as a Cub Scout. As a Cub Scout. Oh, I was a Cub Scout. <laughs> I was a Cub Scout, believe it or not, until I got run over by a horse and buggy type situation. But we were the were horses. You like a, were you like a, were you like a hub Cub Scout in like the 1800s, a horse and buggy? <laughs> well, we were like, I don't I, It's a long story, but I got run over, and it was embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Um but uh, I digress. So we uh, we have we met actually at one of the photo beer and wings situations. I think that was the first time we met. Well, we emailed a little bit back and forth, and then Photo Plus happened. Photo Plus happened. We right. We probably should have met during that time. Right. But it didn't happen for whatever because a lot of people to a lot of people to meet. Right. Right. Yep. So um, I'm going to go through some of these photos. If you want to talk about, I want to talk about your background, but okay. also if we if we want to talk yeah, we about move, we want to move. I guess we want to move it along. Mo let's move, let's move it let's move it this along. Is my uncle, this is a photo I took of my uncle Jim a bunch of years ago. He's the guy that introduced me to photography. Yeah. He was the first person who put a camera in my hand. He um, really guided me. He gave me my first darkroom setup. Uh -huh. He lived in Denville, New Jersey, and his house was like a magical place with all these photo books. Right. And so we can go to the next. Okay. And and so l let's get back in. Okay. So what is this? Is an old, this isn't your photo? No, 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 <laughs> this no, is no. This is the old old school. This is a photo. This is the first picture I remember as as a child of a photo book that he showed me. Oh yeah. And it is by I never say this name right. A Latirg, Latig, Latarg. Uh-huh. You can feel Letarg. free to you can feel feel free to dump that <laughs> in later. Um, and I just always loved it. And to me it was just the wonderment of it to me it encapsulated the like the wonderment of photography and what and although I'm going to show you my pictures, there's absolutely no cars in them. Right, right, you know right, right, I mean? right, but right. It just to me, this was as a child. Like, how did that happen? Yep. Yeah. Um, so let's let's dive into first before we get into now. You're like more of a businessman these days. Yeah, I, I am. I'm the director of brand development for Agency Access. And right. For those of you that don't know, we're a marketing consulting and branding firm for photographers. Right. And illustrators as well. But prior to, to your business. Uh, Savvy, I guess you you were a photographer. Yourself. I shot pic I shot pictures sometimes full time, sometimes part time. Yep. Yeah. And let's talk about your photography background. How'd you get into it? Obviously, your dad showed my, you some books. My uncle Jimmy. Or your uncle, sorry, yeah, that's my uncle Jimmy. My uncle Jimmy showed me some books. I was just always interested in photography. I was always they bought me cameras and they really, really, um, they really pursued. I they really they really um, encouraged me to take to take photographs and when i was in high school it was kind of the only thing that i was that i did well uh -huh. was 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 take pictures um did you did you work for like the the yearbook in high school of or? Course, oh you know what i didn't find that photo of me with the yearbook oh. which is on which is on four which <laughs> were is you like the yearbook photographer yeah, 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 I was the yeah yearbook. me too i wasn't the yearbook photographer that did the photos because they hired a, a company to do that but i did all the inside stuff uh -huh. so Here's a photo of Richard Pryor. So you've done a lot of celebrity work as well. I've, I, I have. noticed when I went went through your photos originally, and, and as we're going through some now, um, Richard Pryor. What a great comedian he was. Oh yeah, Richard Pryor. I used to pal around with Dave Chappelle. Oh yeah. And uh, Dave Chappelle opened up for Richard Pryor. Oh really? At the yeah. Newark, at Newark Symphony Hall, and I got to photograph. The idea was to bring me to get a photo of Dave. And Chappelle together, and uh -huh. that, that did not happen didn't because happen. Richard, um, no, no flashes. You couldn't oh. flash a pit. You couldn't flash, right. and so, but there was, a, and the film wasn't, you know, shit wasn't fast enough that those days. Right. What's right. the uh, what's the uh, uh, Chewy? What's the uh, what's the potty language? Just, Is that fine? No, no don't worry All about right. it. Okay. Yeah, we can. Uh, You're gonna bleep me out. This is the photo brigade, man. Okay, we're crazy and we're raw. We're raw here on the photo. Sir, brigade. thank you for showing up. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, 
Okay, so there is. I know that there's a photo in here somewhere of, of Dave Chappelle. So what is it? More portraiture that you were? Obviously, these photos seem more portraiture than they are. They're only almost almost primarily primarily portraiture. I really thought I specialized in going in and photographing somebody with ten minutes. Yeah. You know, so a lot of these are um, a lot of these are portraits from. And great, I, this is a photo of Chappelle. He opened up for Aretha Franklin. What I would do is I worked for a lot of dot com magazines back back you know in the early in the early two thousands, and you'd have ten minutes with a guy. So uh -huh. you'd come in, you maybe have twenty minutes before you showed up. Yep. yep. You'd come in and you'd try and make two setups, and you and you'd. The whole idea is to just to be personable. Totally. I, I completely agree with you on this. I, that's how I uh, got into portraiture, celebrity portraiture. And it started with me at the Los Angeles Times because they just are constantly doing oh, quick, that, oh, quick hits. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and that's it's exactly the case is that you need to be – you only have a few minutes of time, right? It's, it's like – you know, most of the most of the celebrity portraiture that I've done are during press junkets, and I would imagine yours might be similar. I don't know. No, no, not 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 at all. The magazine would the magazine would would throw me out there, and they'd give me ten minutes, and I would get twenty minutes to set up beforehand. So I would set up one light in a corner, yeah, but facing the corner, and then so I'd get like a window backlit shot with the light, and then I'd be able to just spin the light and put them against whatever wall was there, yeah. And take that picture, so I could give them two. I could give them two looks, and then if I had time, I would do a little snappy uh, Olympus stylus photos. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very much the same way. That's really, yeah. really nice to know. I, yeah. And it was all about. It was all about that connection because you did not have a lot of time, and you had to make. And who knows what that executive's day was like? If it was bad, if you wanted to. You maybe you Google them a little bit, see if you have some commonality between you. Yeah, and oh yeah. Always like have when I photograph you, yeah. when you photograph when I photograph Alan Alda, he and I share the same birthday. I'll like go in, back to Alan Alda that's if in we here can. Someplace. I don't know if it's. I don't know if it is. Uh, it's a few back. Oh well. Um, so you can, we'll get you to can it. tell that we have, we have a script. We have, on this. We have no script. Yeah. We have no script. So when we photograph Alan Alda, we both share the same birthday. So we. So I was just like, you know. Here we are. We just started talking about my birthday, and I used to watch MASH with my dad when we got home, because MASH was on TV here in New York, like, every night at, like, 6 o'clock, uh -huh. like, 7 o'clock. Uh -huh. So I would watch MASH with my dad, and I talked about my favorite episode, yeah. which is an episode that he directed. Oh, really? So him and I him and I hit it off as much as you can hit it off with, with, with Alan all with Alan he's, Alda. he's a really good guy. I photographed him once, winning the uh, International Emmy Award, because uh, I've done house photography for the International oh, Emmys. Cool. and. You know, he was—he's just a classy, classy dude. Yeah, I liked him. I did this for—I used to shoot covers for this theatermania.com. Used to have a little playbill-sized magazine, and I used to. This is this is also from that. That's Corey Feldman. Like, who has a picture of Corey Feldman? No one. That, yeah, that's exactly. what I, love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. It's like, <laughs> Corey like, Feldman. Yeah, just man. who has a picture of Corey Feldman? It's to me that's it's kind of amazing, kind of amazing. Right. This is from the dot com days. This is a Holga with flash on camera. Oh, cool! So that's another thing that I've always like in terms of my using film. I when I got into the industry, right at the cusp of the digital sort of change revolution, and and I was actually one of the first photographers to go digital in my my university at Ohio University. Oh wow! So when I I eventually interned at the Times, New York Times, and the only bit of really film shooting I've done is is with the Holga. You really? know, I did yeah. a whole I did a whole photo series with the Holga. That's so much fun because you never know. Now, you probably had in a shoot like this another camera also. Or did you only go in with the Holga thinking I did what did I do? I did I had at that time I had like a Pentax 6x7, I think. Yeah. Um and I did I probably did a bunch of shots. I did like three or four shots with the Pentax 6x7. And then I went in. Then I went in with the whole guy. I always tried to do something. To, I always tried to do something that was totally different. I used to. We'll see a little bit later. But I used to print photos for Danny Clinch. Oh yeah. And when you printed, when you saw Danny Clinch's proof sheets and everything like that, he had every camera under the sun he was shooting with for all these different looks uh -huh. that he that he um, that he worked that he worked with. And I really liked that. I really liked shooting with all these different, having all these different looks to choose from. So I was, I guess I was really influenced by, um, by what, by what Danny is doing. And he's, you know, 
and he's a he's a raw he's a photo god now. So when did I you... love a smiling rapper, by the a way. Smiling this was rapper. always this was always funny to me. A smiling rapper was always hilarious because <laughs> they they they, they want to be so tough. I know, you know, I know. Did you get now? Did you get that out of him, or is there someone behind you that said this, something? This this was right after nine eleven, and MTV was doing these promos for um, don't 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 run around yelling at Muslims. Essentially, yeah, really, yeah, yeah kind of timely, kind of like it's very timely for now as well. Um, so this was I was sent by XXL magazine to shoot to shoot on this on this thing. So mm-hmm. the background and everything was all them, mm-hmm. and uh, he might have been talking to his friend or whatever. I don't think I got. That. I think it was just I was really like a third thought on, right. on one of these on one of these things. And so I noticed that you you use lighting. Oh man, this is uh, This is Jesse Tyler Ferguson from wow. Modern Family. Yeah, that's a long he time ago. A, he was and I should a, mention that some of these are a little bit low res, so apologies for the yeah, pixelation. We never really uh, knew I never really knew I'd be here, you know. <laughs> this years was sort ago. of a last minute yeah, thing yeah, also. Yeah. Um this, yeah, but uh, Jesse Tyler Ferguson ago. was in a show called the uh, a fifth annual uh Spelling Bee. Uh-huh. And I photographed the cast and I did individual port. That's what I'm saying it did a different fu- the different shot. Right. With each one of these, and I love the way that wall, yeah, looks just sort would of flash on camera. Glimmer. That really, that, that shiny wall, right, gives a little, a little bit of halo, right, right, right. So, very nice, very nice. Yeah. So, so we, we went from being a shooter, and when did you have this sort of transition? Getting you got into printing. Well, and, I always, I was always, I worked at a bunch of catalog studios when I was when I was fresh out of high, fresh out of college, uh-huh. and. I got fired from all of them because I didn't like to assist. Oh yeah. <laughs> and there was this company called JG that was a like a they were like a creative photograph they were like a creative staffing company. Uh-huh. And so I called the guy up and I said, "Hey, I'm looking for a, I'm looking for a job." And he sent me out to uh, for this assistant gig and I go, "Oh man, the guy, the guy all he wanted me to do is bring furniture up in an elevator." I go, "I printed photos for him." And the guy was like, "You can print." You can print. And boom, so my dark room, my my I I, I jumped into the dark room. So most of the time while I was shooting pictures, I always had a darkroom gig. That's why I was able to see all that inside stuff, see like the stuff that Danny Clinch. Now I just photograph my wife. That's my wife. No, oh. that's my wife. There's probably no Aww. photo of my wife. <laughs> Everyone's got the photos of it's their my wife, wife from 23rd Street train station with those hats. Aww. hi wifey. Yeah, with those hats. Maybe everybody knows about those. <laughs> yeah, and then those are my those those are my dogs. We had to get we got your got your whole family. Yeah, in the here. whole family. The whole, the whole nice. family's in there. Um, so I was always I was always able to hold down a, at least a part part time a part time job taking taking printing printing black and white images for right. you know it was color color edge and then edge and then black and white edge and then it became Lexington Labs yeah eventually this is my photographic mentor this is Sid Kaplan it's this is from APAD from this year um, he's Robert Frank's printer and really inspired me when I was at SVA. To become to to print really really well, and he's one of the people that um, gave me that love of being of being in the darkroom. Although I haven't been in a darkroom in ten years. Uh huh. Now, okay, let's. So oh, first of all, this is a beautiful photo. The first guy I ever printed for that of note was Norman Parkinson, mm-hmm. and he just came into this lab called call. What was it called? Shit, I don't even know. It was on like above. It was on Twenty First Street, someplace. I don't even remember the name of the place. And he used used to come in. And I had no idea who the guy was. Uh huh. And I used to just talk with him and print and print and print photos. So yeah. uh, here's so a. So this I may not have printed this one, but this is just a sample of of of, of the type of work of that, that came work. through. And then this is a, a this is one of my Neil favorite. Lifer. I know Neil was on a few weeks ago. Yeah. He was talking about his favorite image. This is my favorite image of Neil, which I had printed a whole bunch of times. In the dark room, I just think it's kind of amazing. I'm a big JFK fan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so my question is about printing in general. I hate printing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I, I I hate printing. I hate editing. What do you hate about print? What do you hate about printing? Well, you know what? I I I, I will admit that one of the best parts of my love for photography came when I first put my first print in developer and saw that image appear. It's it's, it's actually it's a magical thing, and it's really what people are kids that don't go to art school are missing out on right. with this digital revolution they're missing that magic of like seeing seeing something that you created from right. from the beginning right like you you didn't you obviously you didn't make the film 
but you put the film in the camera, you took up, you took your picture, you process. If you're a kid, in a, if you're a hobbyist in a basement, you probably processed your own film. Right. Oh yeah, I you had made, one. You made your own proof sheet. Sure. Now you're putting it in the enlarger, and you're going to make an enlargement from the, it's 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 amazing. So I guess I should I should uh, change what I said. Okay. I I don't like. Just well, it's because it, it 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 takes so much time and skill that I just feel like I'd rather put towards making the image rather than printing. That's like a whole nother right. process. It is a whole nother process, but this whole nother exposure process. It's a whole you know burning, dodging, getting everything right, yeah. the right amount of time on the fixer and the mm. developer and understop over. You know all all these different things really. And and, and so I just want to take the photo and have a beautiful print made and so I basically just send it out and so that this kind of could segue into what people would what, send it out, send so it what out I, to you so what I, well it wasn't I worked for companies so it wasn't it wasn't like I was the guy taking in the orders this is the this is this is the only thing I could find I was I used to print for Mario Testino when I worked at Color Edge uh-huh. and I was the first person to see one of the first people to see Madonna and her new baby they were photographed at Vanity Fair mm -hmm. and they told us that that they would get sued if any of these photographs made it to the outside. Oh, yeah. So being in the darkroom, you got to see a lot of stuff that you wouldn't normally get to see. Right. Which, which, was, which was great. Mm -hmm. You know, you were really on the inside. And that's one of the things that I really do miss about owning a print shop is being on the inside, seeing so much and being surrounded by photography, all being surrounded by photography all the time. This is another Mario Testino image that I may or may not have printed, but it's... It's black and white. I'm, I'm thinking I possibly, ha possibly have. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, and I hope Mario doesn't get annoyed that we're showing his images. <laughs> yeah, uh, you can, Mario, you can call me. <laughs> um, this is uh, Diego Yucatel. This is from a, a, a book of, um, of uh, the designers from Saks Fifth Avenue, and this is t some of the images that I printed for him for that book. Now... Um, <sighs> You know, just the process of, you know, when, when photographers would come, they'd give you something. Do you, I, I just can't even imagine, like, how much it must suck to, like, get, get a photo, give it to a, a photographer that you think looks perfect, right? And the photographer looks at it and is like, oh, no, you know, this needs to be brought up. This needs to, and you need to redo it all. And, and right. do you, did you have a lot of these really picky photographers that... We, we did. We did have a lot of really picky photographers. But what, what you would do is... You, you kind of got inside their heads, especially if they were repeat repeat clients. Uh -huh. Like we just showed, we just showed three of Danny Clinch's images, and now we're about to show a fourth Danny Clinch. Image okay, as yeah, well. yeah, yeah, that's okay. Okay, um, these are images like this Tupac image. I printed repeatedly throughout throughout my darkroom career, uh -huh. and so I knew exactly what it needed to have. Uh -huh. Right. You know, and the next image will be the was probably the Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash. This Johnny Cash image. Everybody knows this Johnny Cash image. I printed this repeatedly throughout the years. In fact, this is I took this offline. I would have made the I would have made this the middle dark I would have made the middle darker if it was my print. Right. right, my, right. Probably maybe not my print. Um, well, how do you feel about digital manipulation now? Like do you prefer like do you still prefer the printing or do you think that you can just manipulate and do whatever you need digitally now? I got to be honest, I think that's a whole different conversation because manipulation is not necessarily printing. I mean, making a good print is a little bit different than 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 manipulation. I know there's a whole conversation going on right now with people don't want to uh you know, they don't want to accept raw files because of all Yeah, the, that's another know, thing. The Reuters manipulate. and their uh their new rules yeah. with uh yeah. They don't want to accept all these uh all these things but, but but I mean it's like you see these like you I'm sure you could be pretty um, unethical in the dark room if you wanted to well the, I mean the truth is I mean if you look at Ansel Adams proof sheets and you look at Ansel Adams prints uh-huh they're telling you two different stories uh-huh you know he was a master printer and he really knew how to he really knew how to work his negatives uh-huh so but you can't create something that really isn't there in a dark room right if you take a raw file, dump it into Photoshop, you can do a lot. If you're one of the people that wants to do a lot of things with it, you can do a lot of things. How many times do you come across an image and go, wow, that's way too, someone did way too much this? Oh, yeah, many times. Yeah. A lot of those are award-winning photos, <laughs> too. <laughs> <laughs> that's another story, right? You know? <laughs> but, um, but you could do so much to it, and I, I don't feel like the darkroom can lend itself to... To too much, too many shenanigans. Right. 
Yeah. You know, there's something pure about having the putting a negative. The negative's not the negative really can't lie to you. I don't think you can lie on that page. Yeah. That's you true. Know. Do you do you feel that a raw photo is easier to manipulate than a J I mean I Reuters I'll, Reuters thinks so than a JPEG? I, I mean, I, I don't see how uh, like a picture uh, Hey now, you're making a mess. Hey now, right. <laughs> um I'm I can't see clumsy. I can't yeah, I can't see how a a photo you know, it stops people from cloning or something like that. I, you know, it's I, like, I that's the main issue, right? I, I, I don't know what their issue is, to be quite honest with you. Is it because of exposure latitude with the, with the raw file and they're able to pull things out of it to tell different stories that, you know... I also think it could be something to do with just the, the general file size. Uh, okay. You know, I, I've had... I believe it was... It was the Times or, or all the like. I remember at the Times all these years freelancing. It's like I they would n get so upset if I would upload a full resolution JPEG to their system. Really, like it would just be too too much too much, you know. Yeah. And they don't need it because they're printing on toilet paper and right. on the web, right? Right. Is the reality. Well, we're things. at the world we don't need we don't need eighty megapixel cameras. We really don't. That's one of the things I hate when people are like, oh, how many megapixels yeah. is your camera? I I don't know. You yeah. know, I have a Leica, I have a Canon, I have a couple yeah. different types, of, and they're like, how many megapixels? Uh, I don't know, and I've had it. You it know, doesn't, it doesn't matter because you know what? When it all comes down to it, most people. And last, of course, okay, we're going to segue into this. This is a typical day at got. This was a typical typical day at Gotham Imaging okay. where we had photos on the wall. You know, um, various various people. I think we see a Neil Leifer off here on the side here. Oh yeah, Muhammad, to the right. Muhammad yeah, yeah, Ali. Yeah. And I don't even know what's in the middle there. It looks like uh, it almost looks like what's the guy's name from uh, Texas Ranger? No, no, no. a walking Texas Ranger. <laughs> that's me. That's me and Bill Hunt. I like just like to put pictures in of him. You, you sh do you have like a, a wall of you with people? I don't. You know what? I don't like have at a, a barbershop. I don't have a wall with me with people. You should. I don't. I should have. A, I don't. I've never really thought about that all that much. We did a lot of work. Gotham Imaging opened up in late 2006. In 2007. Um, two people showed up at our door um, with um, with Fred Conrad's name uh -huh. and said, um, we're here from the New York Times and we're moving to a new building and we would like you guys to bid to uh, print all the photos for the new building. Oh, really? And hey, then you, did you? We did. Hey, you printed some of my photos. Oh, look at that. Well, son of a gun. Yeah, so if your photo hangs on the, <laughs> on, the, on, the on the walls of the New York Times building, yeah. we, were, we were involved with that. Very cool. So, after a bunch of years, um, they put out the Aperture put out this book, uh, you know, Kathy Ryan's photographs and mm -hmm. the, the New York Times. It wasn't necessarily all of her stuff, but the New York Times magazine images throughout the ages. And yeah. this was the inscription that Kathy very cool Kathy put for me, which is kind of which Kathy's is kinda been cool. doing a really cool like uh, photo series on um, yeah yeah office, office romance. Office. Well, if you if you've been up there, right? In oh, the new yeah. building. I mean, it's just the sight lines and just the shadows. It just, oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's just kind of amazing. And I think they're on a higher floor also, which... They're which on helps. five. Oh, they're just on five. Okay. They're on five. But it's it's the Port Authority is across the street from them, so it's not... That's not that Oh, that's high. right. Exactly. So, so you get a lot light. of you get a lot of light. Yeah, in especially that, in, the in that building. There, so yeah. that's my cool... That's my one cool inscription. That's one of my one cool inscription. That's nice. Is Robert Whitman. We did a, we did a big show with him called uh, uh, F'd Up in Minneapolis, <laughs> and that's him holding the invite. I think the next one you'll see the Polaroids that were the, were the source... These are uh -huh. all Polaroids that we scanned in, and um, and printed from his uh, '80s party days. '80s party days. Yeah, in Minneapolis. And these are just these are just Gotham clients. That's Jason Bourbet, who's a An artist, a well. nomad artist right now. Is Ira Block? Hey, Ira's come come here. I got to yeah. get him on the podcast too. Ira's he's got like, he's got good stories. I'm sure he does. Is Eleanor Carucci? Gregory hey. Heisler. Gregory's been on the podcast. Podcast. Gregory is. Um, he, I, I've done behind the scenes work for his two Sports Illustrated covers. Oh, cool. That, that he did. Uh, one was in Times Square recently with. Um, oh man, one of the running backs or something like that for the New York Jets. I, right. I'm not a sports guy. Any, I used right. to shoot all sorts of sports. Now I, I don't even know who who, who the guy's name was. Um, and then um, also for the marathon cover, he did a, a photograph of like. 5,000 people at the Boston Marathon finish line. Oh, cool. A portrait for the cover um, days before. It was a year anniversary of the, of oh, the bombing. Okay. And uh, he's super professional, a really great guy. And I've. I, I've, I, re I really like him. I like Gregory a lot. We spent. We did. We did Ilford. He's an Ilford master. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Ilford, we're really good friends with. Uh, with the people at Ilford. What is he doing here? Just uh, spot 
I don't know what he's doing. He might be showing. He might be pointing out a pointing out a spot on a scan or something that needed to be right. That needed to be. So we're really good friends with the people at Ilford. So they were launching a new paper, and then we um, we did a big show with the paper launch. And so I spent a lot of time. And with is this Gregory. is this a printer paper? Like, or this is, is all. Uh, these are all Epson prints. Epson prints. Okay. All Epson prints. This is Jesse Froman who did these. Who spent some time with Kurt Cobain and did a whole book about it. This nice. was a show that he did for Morrison Hotel Gallery. This is David Carroll, who you guys might you guys might know, who normally yeah. gets uh, darkroom prints made, and I was trying to turn them over into a digital printer. Digital printing. Yeah. Do you feel that digital printing is is up to par? Do, would you or do you are you like a? How do I you feel? do feel that digital printing at as long as the machines. As long as like the Epson machines are calibrated properly and you can get a true black and white out of them, I feel like digital printing is there. And those Harmon by Hanemuel papers, the mm -hmm. stuff that is very, that is very much like a darkroom paper, is 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 there. Uh -huh. It's, I mean, the big the big complaint that people say is like I can see the ink on the top of the paper. You know, you can oh, see right. it has to it, it's, it's, it has to be there. Right. You know, because then in a true print, it would be in the, like the layers. It's of in the, the layers. It's in the it's in the emulsion. What we were doing in the dark room when we were, when I was working at Lexington Labs, we were taking dark room paper and running it through the fixer and washing it and then putting it through an Epson machine and making prints on it. Interesting. We showed it to the people at Ilford and they were like, wow, that, that looks like a really good idea. Fast forward like three years, and then we're beta testing this stuff for him at my neck, you know, at Gotham Imaging, which was my next company. Right. So on. I feel like we uh, we at Gotham were really on the forefront. Listen, Graham Nash was on the forefront of digital printing. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? He's been doing this forever. Yeah. But we at Gotham, I felt, were really on the forefront of of Epson printing and really helped make it make it make it bigger than it actually would have been at least here in New York, without yeah. us, and yeah. changing the mindset about how fine artists thought about, you know, pigment prints or G-clay prints or whatever they call them, or inkjet prints on a, on a more of a raw, more of a raw level. Right. Okay, so we've gone through your photos. Now, now I'm just going to leave this in the background just to, to have in the background here. But okay. let's talk about uh, your sort of transition from the printing world into now what you're doing these days. As well, what... I my job, my, my, my position at Gotham was really to connect with, with, with our client base uh -huh. and to really go out and talk to people about what they wanted. It was, I always said that I was, you know, I'm in the customer, I'm in not the customer relationship, but I'm the relationship business. And then we happen to make prints. Right. So there were other places in town that, that could make prints probably just as well as we could, but they didn't have us. Right. They didn't have me. They didn't have my former business partner. They didn't have the few people that we had working. I mean, we printed every single photo that hangs in that Times building at a like 700 square feet. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's a lot of photos. Yeah. Too. And I don't and think some big photos. And the truth is, I don't think we dropped. I don't think we dropped many balls, you know, as far as and they showed up and they gave us this order. And I had no idea how to do it. <laughs> I mean, we knew how to print, <laughs> but we had no idea how to f how to how to Fill do the something. workflow. Yeah. Was it the largest order you'd ever gotten? Oh, it was the first. It was like the, the third order we oh, ever really? got. We opened up and they showed up. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, Fred Conrad, who... Fred who, was my mentor. I was an intern at the time. So oh, that's awesome. He's actually paid to be my, my mentor. I, I love Fred. He doesn't return my phone calls. But <laughs> anyway, but, but um, I, he, he recommended us because my former business partner, Ryan, had a relationship with him and they both geek out over old cameras and old film and stuff yeah. like that. And so he said, before you guys decide to go with Dugal or Lamont or whomever you decide, just go see my friends. Yeah. And I didn't know, I didn't even know Fred at the time. Yeah. And we got this great job. We got this great job on, you know, on Fred's recommendation. Which Come to is, think about it, anytime I've used a, you know, printing or getting film developed or something, it's always been a recommendation from Fred, as a matter of fact, because he's, he's, he's he was the first person I, I barely ever, well, not that's not true, but during that internship, um, I would go around to assignments with him, and he does a lot of these portraiture assignments, like I had mentioned, these, you know, 10, 15, 20-minute type yeah. deals. And, and he shows he, up with more gear than exactly, he needs. Exactly. Wait, you know, he, he shows up with all sorts of gear and lighting and, and film, and, and it's, it's like it was inspiring. And he actually inspired me to get, you know, do the Holga project that I was doing right. and, and that kind of stuff. And uh, 
Yeah, he's a good guy, and he's and we should say he's just gone freelance. He has gone freelance. He's gone freelance. Took the buyout last year or, or six I, months I don't, ago. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I read. He didn't no, no, tell that me. Is, he didn't tell me case. though, because he doesn't return my calls. <laughs> Fred returned <laughs> return Peter's calls already. We'll text him right now yeah, and get like, him. I, I've texted him. He doesn't return the texts either. <laughs> anyway, um, so so my job was really to connect, to emotionally connect with 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 the clientele. And the truth is, I it wasn't hard for me to do because. I like it. I genuinely enjoy talking to people. I genuinely, fi- I genuinely enjoy finding out what people are about and what they do, and and all of and all these things. I don't necessarily interview people, uh-huh. but I'll sit back and let them talk about themselves. Sure. And that's me too. How, yeah. And that's how I. And that yeah, you're doing it to me. <laughs> and that's how. Um, that's how I've connected, and that's how I feel like I've branded myself uh-huh. in this industry as. I've heard people talk to me, talk, tell me that I know everybody. That you uh-huh. like, if I don't know them, you're gonna know them. Right. Or totally, I'm a few. I'm one step away from really calling anybody on the phone and and making any, making anything happen. And that's the emotional connection. That's con- that's what what's what I consider an emotional brand. That's one of the things. And I'll segue into, you know, a, another topic. You know, well, it's the same topic, I guess. Um, you know, photographers think of branding as their logo. Yep. It's not true. They are their brand. Mm-hmm. They are their emotional brand. The way they dress, the way they, the way they write an email, the way they do all of the way they do what they do that makes them human and not just photographers. You know yep. the way they follow up. Yep. The way they do all of these things, and that's because there's a million people in this town that can take a picture. Sure. And the reason you're going to get hired is because of that connection you have with whomever that person is that's going to to hire you right you know i completely agree with you on that it's 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 it is the most important thing out there you know there are a lot of successful photographers that know how to do this right it's it's not just business but it's it's you know how you present yourself is is everything and i've had clients tell me that uh i've i've lost assignments because you know of not answering a phone call or not being reliable you know that you never know um, how a person's going to react based off of you're not answering a call or not returning a call or um, the way that you write an email. You know, I try yeah. to, I try, you try, you try to give your personality away in every email and you, every, you, you know, you, you do. I, a, per, a perfect example is, is I feel like a guy like Monty, Monty Isom, who I went to see talk a few weeks or a month or two ago at the Apple store. And he talks about how he, dude, he like bring his dad on meetings with him. Like he'll travel with his dad and then bring on, bring his dad in on meetings with him. How do you not hire a guy who brings his dad? <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's his. That's but that's. I don't think it. But the, and also the whole thing. It has to be genuine. Yeah. If you're bringing your fucking dad, and you don't mean it, then you then <laughs> then it's just weird. Then it's just weird, <laughs> and people are, and people are totally gonna see through it. Right. Right. You know, you have to find out. You have to find out what your authenticity is. Right. And put that forward, mm-hmm. because if you're not being authentic, if you're if you think my authenticity is the same as your authenticity, it's not. Right. If you're trying to be authentic in the way that I'm authentic, it's going to come off inauthentic. Right. It has to be your authenticity that you. Am I making? Am I no, sounding, I, I, am I think, sounding crazy? No, no. I think it I makes feel like a monologuing. No, no, no. Yeah. I, I, that's what I, I like. I like letting you talk because I think you're making a lot of great great points um, on that topic. So it's, I think it's important because a lot of people that listen to this podcast not only are, are our peers, but are you know, younger students or people that are interested right. in getting into this business. Right. So we, um, at, at, at SVA, they have a class taught by my friend Michael Foley, uh-huh. Foley Gallery, and it is a business of photography. It's not really a business of, I don't know if it's a business of photography, it's more about, it's more about taking the students around and showing them other other jobs in photography or careers in photography other than sh- pressing a button. Right. Which means taking a picture for those. That- <laughs> yeah. So so they would take them around and we would sit with the students and we would talk about how have, have a way that you work, have a way that you follow up. When you're out at something, ask for a business card, have a business card. Make sure you send somebody a note saying, hey, it was great to meet you the other night. Yep. 
Follow you know, ups, yeah. Follow not even, but that's not even a follow up. That's just sending like, hey, I really liked meeting you, no matter who it is. Because yeah. the truth is, you're gonna see the same. If you're gonna stay in this city, you're gonna be seeing the same, same 400, 300 people for the next 30 years. It's true. Yeah. You know, people are gonna come and go, but the people that are gonna stay and be successful are gonna be the same people. Yep. And you want to be around those people. Those people. Those people want to be around you, and they're in pr- places of influence. Yep. If you're friends, if you're friends with so and so at a great magazine that you want to work for, guess what? They're gonna. They're most well, likely gonna a, hire you. Well, and not only that, but like you never know where a person you're gonna meet is gonna be. So, for instance, you know, I, I've had editors when I was interning at the New York Times who are now directors of photography at various news publications and magazines. You know, right. no longer at the Times, they're somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, look at Patrick Witte. Patrick, Patrick Witte, Patrick yeah. Witte went, from, went from being like the international desk guy, right? He was my editor when I was an right. intern. And and went on and was at Wired. Wired. And, you know, and yeah. now he's, he's independent right now. Now he's independent yeah. doing, like, he's doing new stuff oh, with dude, his he's like standing Periscope. On the, like, the, he's like, isn't he like standing on the banks and the, like, I, with his iPhone taking pictures of kids? Not just that, but he's periscoping live video feed. <laughs> and I, I couldn't believe it. Like, I, I was sitting at home that day as I do when I'm not doing this or out shooting, editing, I have two big screens, right? Right. I've got one screen with the Photoshop and stuff where I'm doing Uh stuff and one big screen where I'm watching Netflix or something. Right, right, right. right. So I see on my Facebook feed him, you know, saying, you know, this is happening right now, the the immigration crisis. Tune in. I push the button and full freaking screen on my, you know, 27 inch, you know, iMac. Of course, he's got to say 20. He's got to do that, right? He's got to go, oh, yeah, I have a 27 inch iMac. 4K. Yeah, 4K. <laughs> so, so I mean, but that's just to say, like, I mean, people are, are broadcasting live off of their stinking cell phones, and I'm watching an immigration crisis, people running from the, the Hungarian police at the border, and he's just bringing it to you live. And I've just never seen anything like that. And I was so taken, like, oh, my God, like, this is has more drama, and it's live, and my friend's producing it. And as you can see, there's thousands of people starting to watch the whole time right so it's it's kind of amazing i'm sorry i didn't silence my phone on the way in <laughs> is that your you, phone someone calling me from out there i don't you know like todd heisler going hey are you on that it's, thing right now no it's uh it's uh <laughs> it's fred fred conrad fred. <laughs> <laughs> but i agree I, I i totally agree with you I, I think what what he's doing is like amazing but we'll go we'll we'll rewind it back to the people you never know where the people you are where the people that you meet are gonna be yeah, you just you just don't you just don't know. People leave town, they come back to town. So, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, you know all these things happen. So the people that you are running into as a photo student, if you're running into people at events or whatever, these are the same people you're going to be running into forever. So th- also think about your brand. Think yep. about how you want to present. Think about how you want to present yourself. I looked. I was talking to a friend the other night, and I was talking about T-shirts. I had this idea. Uh, it's not a great idea, so I'll give it up. <laughs> I steal steakhouse napkins, <laughs> right? That is not so, like, a great idea. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, but but there's a there's a there is a there is a a service called bar um, called Dive Bar Shirt Club. Uh-huh. Like so, they'll get you T-shirts from dive bars, and I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I want to subscribe to it. And she looked at me, she goes, I've never seen you once in a T-shirt. <laughs> so that's like, you know, I I went and had lunch with a friend over the summer. He goes, I've never seen you without a jacket on. Right. So that's part of my personal thing is just being more dressed than everybody in, yeah. and everybody in, you yeah. know, in in the room for the main part. And I've I've we used to wear at Gotham Imaging we wore suits every day. Really. I used to work in a dark room. I would go into work in a suit. I'd change out of the suit. I'd get dressed back for lunch, change back out, and then get dressed to go home. Oh, man. Because I was dressing for the job I wanted, not the job I had. Yeah, that's the that's you the know, key. And I always, that's what my grandma tells me. I always had my eye on something. I didn't know what it was, but I always had my eye on something bigger. Right. You know, and then when Gotham... When, when, when the time came that I realized that nobody was processing film much anymore... Right. You know, I looked at the guy, the guy who was working, working with, you know, working next to me, and I said, "How much is it to, to, um, to open this up for ourselves?" Right. And we, somebody gave us some money, and we put some money, we got some money together ourselves, and we, and we did it, and we went for it. Yeah. And we had a really good run. Gotham is is, is no longer around, but uh-huh. we had, a, I think we had a, a pretty good run. Got involved in some really, some really great projects, but 
Uh, Probably uh, led to a lot of great connections as well. Oh my God, I it led to so much, so many good connections. I can, I really feel I met. I'm pretty friendly with everybody that that was a client that was a client at Gotham. I say whenever I say clients because at Agency Access we don't call our we call the people that use our services clients call them members oh, because right, it's yeah. a membership service. Yep. So whenever I say clients, I kind of stutter a little bit, just a tiny bit, because of. Uh, because uh, that's that's what I that's what I think about. So I want to transition a little bit since you had mentioned agency access. I did. That's a good. It's a good segue. Um, I, I I just want to make sure that uh, you know we we talk about it a little bit. I how are we on time? We're fine. Okay. Um, so the question here is is that I I've, I'm sure like every professional photographer in the industry has heard of agency access. Um, I personally have not used the service. Um, I've just you know for whatever reason, but. Can you explain why a photographer should be interested in, in a service such as this and, and how it how it really helps sir, them out? Don't cut to me yet. I'm going to wipe don't. my nose. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Chewy. Um, <laughs> yes, there. The we have we have a lot of a lot of different services for photographers in all levels of their career. Uh huh. Um, it can be as it can be as simple as buying access to our database, mm -hmm. which has over ninety thousand creative contacts on it worldwide, which allows you to um, email, have emails, have direct mail contacts, have phone numbers for creatives. Uh huh. It um, you can email through our um, through our website, giving analytics. Uh huh. You know, so you can see your stats, see your clicks, see your open, see your open rates. Uh huh. You, we have uh, consulting services, mm -hmm. so you can come as a photographer. You can come and show one of our consultants your work. Mm -hmm. Talk to them about where you want your career to go. Mm -hmm. They will then um, go out. They would tell you to go out. They'll tell you to pull twelve images from photographers that you would love to have shot. Uh huh. And then they'll sit down with you and figure out if you are a hop, skip, or a jump away from creating this work. Right. And then they will draw a roadmap for you how to get there. They'll also draw correlations between the work that you're shooting and the work that you've selected because there's going to be some stuff once you step away and look at the body that there's going to be a lot of correlations between, between the work. Right. We... Um, Photographers are not good editors. That's true. I hate it, and that's yeah, my. You, I, so you talked about. I, it. I absolutely, and I, and I can see uh, the service being very valuable because my problem is is that I, I, you know, I do this stuff. I go out and shoot. I have these like back. I, I I'm a travel photographer, and that's really where I want to, you know, be. What's what do I want to be doing really with my my life is traveling right. and seeing sure. the world, having amazing experiences. So. I go, luckily my wife is from Barcelona, so we go to Europe, you know, once or twice oh, cool. a year, which is really nice. Um, but I, I, I've realized, I look back, and I haven't updated my website in years. Right. And I've had all of these really great trips, in them, and, and it's like, what do I do with it? It's like, I don't want to just put up, you know, Barcelona and this town and that town. It's like, how do I put these together? Right. Do I use? Uh, do I create a mailer? You know, how? You well, know. what's what's interesting is we 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 offer both uh, web and portfolio edits, so you can actually dump all these images on one of our consultants and they and talk to them about your narrative, what you want to, how you want to present this, and yeah. they will help you formulate what 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 a website. What your new website should look should look like. Yeah, and we could talk about this. Afterward. We should we should do a little case study or something yeah. for a Photo Brigade. I, I think that I think that it is important. But I, I, I didn't realize, and I'm glad I'm I'm playing this video right now. But I didn't realize how many people you guys have. There are uh, between between staff and uh, remote employees, which I am one of them, uh -huh. a remote employee. We have uh, 65 people, plus or minus. 65. 65 people. We're in about we're in about 10,000 square feet out in Hop Hog, Long Island. And about how many members would you uh, say there about are? About 4K. Really? Yeah, worldwide. Yeah. Holy moly. Yeah. I didn't realize that. That's great. And so is it is it only, it's not just for photographers? It's at we artists? Have, you, well, photographers um, and illustrators and uh, fine, you know, some fine, we do fine art database as well. Mm-hmm. But mainly for photographers and illustrators and people in the photo business, stock agents, um, Photo reps. Mm -hmm. We um, you, you have up uh, the, the, we do design. So, so we web can design. Do, we can do web design. We can do email design. We can do logo designs. 
here's a here's a full data a database full. emailer print and mail found folios phone marketing design branding consulting portfolio build and campaign manager let's go to the, let's go to the campaign let's go to campaign manager i'll tell you a little bit about that okay campaign manager is a fully flushed out marketing program uh-huh it's a 15 month program you spend the first 3 months with your with your consultant editing your work, finding out your narrative, finding out who who your target market is. Uh-huh. You spend time with our design staff designing your six promos that go out throughout the year. Uh-huh. After those 3 months, after those 3 months are over, the next 12 months, every month an email goes out. Uh-huh. The next month a, a direct mail piece goes out. Uh-huh. And then we'll even make phone calls on your behalf. Hey, I'm calling from Robert Kaplan Studios. Who would like to come in and show you his work? Right. And we'll try and get through to someone who can get you a meeting. Nice. So with the attempts to get a meeting. Nice. It's a really, really, it's a really powerful tool, and it's great for, it's great for everybody, especially people. Um, it's what I what I hear when I meet with when I what I hear when I meet with people. It is really good because it just keeps them on track. Listen, we all we're in a we're in a fine, we're in an art field. We're not exactly the most um, um, organized people in the world because yeah. that's not. It's you know going to art school. You don't that doesn't they don't really teach you that. Yeah. Right. Are you really organized? I'm not. You're not. You should see my desk. Yes. So <laughs> what it does is it keeps people on track. No matter what happens in your life, it continues to go. Yeah. And so your marketing program is working without you, without you know, you can just step aside. You can be really involved, or you right. can not be involved. Right. It all depends on it all depends on how you want to work, and there are custom programs that we put together for everybody. Yeah, you know, if you like this and don't want to have this, and we if we find a way to make it work for you, it's a what we do at Agency Access is an insanely powerful tool, and everybody should become a part. All right, yeah, that's 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 how I feel. Well, uh, yeah. it's just agencyaccess.com. You can you can call them, reach them, leave them a message. I'm sure someone will reach out to you to. Uh get to you you could always get in touch with me i'm at peter at agencyaccess.com and we could um i can set you up with a free trial or um, a walkthrough for the system if you're here in new york i'll come buy a coffee and i can talk to you all about it he will i we've will met, we've I met do. for coffee already. we have yeah. met for we have met for coffee <laughs> Actually, that was a beer. It was a beer, but you know, hey, what are you gonna do? <laughs> um, well, that's great. Um, so, do you have any uh, last sort of thoughts for for folks getting into the industry? You know, or or people maybe transitioning because what we're what's happening now is there's a lot of these staffers transitioning into freelancers, right. um, which I almost feel are at a disadvantage even to new younger because they don't have they don't they don't have that acumen of. They don't have that business side of it all because right. they would show up in the morning. They have a call sheet, exactly, and they would just they just get in their car or on the train and they would go out and 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 do it. Yeah. Any any thoughts towards to, to to them, or would you say just in general, all photographers should follow some s- simple steps to? Jeez, I know it's a loaded one. You know, it is a loaded it it is a loaded one. I mean, just get out, just meet people, find the people that you look at your work. Figure out what your work is suitable for, and target those people that you think your work is suitable for. I was, I was, um, I was having, um, I was having. I'm going to say coffee, but it was a drink with my <laughs> friend Deborah Dragon, formerly of Rolling Stone magazine, and she said one of the biggest problems that she had, and she loved getting emails and felt that was her job as a photo editor to get to get emails from people, you know, showing them work, but. She wanted to know why people would send her food photography. Oh, right. She's at rock. She's Rolling at Rolling Stone. Stone. Yeah. She's at rock and roll. So the idea, just find out who, find out who, find out who would hire someone that looks like your work, mm-hmm. and then target those people. Right. Don't target yeah. other people that have nothing to do with with what you want to sell. If you're shooting portraiture, target people who hire portrait photographers. Totally makes not sense. Not food photographers. Totally makes sense. Because yeah. they're not going to hire. A you know, it's. I mean, right, yes, right, there right. are. Portraits there could be food an opp- opportunities, but but yeah, it makes sense. There are, or if you're going to to send, uh, just send them some of your of that sort of work. You know, really, I think I think in general, a photo editor is more likely to respond well to your mailer or or email or whatever if they can tell that you did something specifically for them. You know, where it's not just a mass. 
I don't. I mean, well, maybe I mean, not. it's hard. It's. I mean, it's hard to send out one email to one person and dial it to every single person. I think that's that would be hard. I mean, I would say maybe on a follow up basis that oh, yeah. would be good. Mm-hmm. Maybe you go through your stats and you look at your you look at your open rates, you look at your clicks, and then if you want to. S- dash off an email. Normally what we would do is we'd just find those opens and clicks and then we'd target them with direct mail pieces. Right. But if you would want to open up your clicks or emails and then send someone a personal note from your from your from your email with an image that you felt would be a good mm-hmm. would be a good fit for their for their um, for their magazine. I don't see yeah. I don't see why I don't see why why you wouldn't do that. I right. mean any the contact needs to be uh, authentic. Just be authentic, man. Just don't don't crowbar shit in. Yeah. You know, if it feels weird to you, it's probably weird. Right. Makes sense. You know, if it, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, right? <laughs> Something like that. You know, I saw a picture recently at, from an opening of a guy that I'm friends with on Facebook, and it's like, it's it's like Elliot Erwitt. And this Japanese photographer that just had this big opening at Aperture upstairs and downstairs, and two other guys, and they're all looking at one camera, but he's looking ahead his own camera. Right? Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. <laughs> don't like if like don't be that guy. <laughs> Everything should feel authentic, and the way you connect with people is on that emotional level. You have to find and just find the way you connect with them. The way I connect is not the same way Robert Kaplan's going to connect. It's not the same way. What's your name, sir? Bill, it's not the same way Bill's going to connect. It's not the same way Chewy's going to connect, right? It's just a, it's just a different, it's a just, just different way, right? Absolutely. You know? And just the, the way you connect with people is on that is on that level. And I can't tell you how to connect with them because everybody's different. Everyone's different, but auth- authenticity. Be yourself, and that's the key. Unless yourself is really unless you have an awful, <laughs> then try and be somebody else. Get into the another business. But yeah. but yeah, maybe get into the business where you just sit in a room that's dim, and you you know look at a computer dim monitor like your all personality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just I mean I, I guess we can sign off with just be authentic. Be authentic. Be authentic. You know, then that's that's that. Yeah, that's that. All right, Peter. Well, um, before we before we sign off, let's just make sure you had mentioned people can contact you if they're interested in pretty much anything. It's uh, it's Peter at agencyaccess.com. All right. He's in New York City. If you ever want to talk with him about uh, these sorts of consulting services or, Any, or, or anything, really. Any time. I'll give you an opinion on anything. By the man of beer. I don't talk. Pol- I don't talk politics except good without, idea without my, you know, outside of my family. Donald Trump. Sorry. I don't talk. I don't talk politics outside of my family. Good call, um, or religion. And but. and all right, on uh, social, your social. I uh, just hit me on. I'm. I'm I got to be honest. I really put a lot of effort into Facebook. Facebook, so it's just yeah. Peter Barbarian on Facebook. Okay, just all one word. Yeah, I mean, I have an Instagram that's at Peter Barbarian. Okay, and all your name. P e t e r b e r b e r i a n. B E R B E R I A N. B E R B E R I A N. Burberry. Bees and Boy E R. Another Bees and Boy <laughs> and another E R. And then I A N is in North. <laughs> okay. So with that, um, I like will it. also let you know uh, to go to photobrigade.com slash live to watch this and all other podcasts. You There's can, some really good stuff. There's like some really good podcasts. Neil has got some great Neil has got some great stories. Oh man. There's I mean if Fred's you think about it. Fred's got some great stories. Vince has got some great stories. We've we've got I think this is gonna be like 86 or 7 this podcast that means and most podcasts are about an hourish long so I mean that's like three days worth of just non-stop photo industry talk so if you're in a car if you're working out and you want something to listen to and you want to learn something like me I'm a multitasker right. if I'm jogging if I'm doing something if I'm on the subway I have to be like listening to the news or listening to something a podcast um it's great for you. So photobrigade.com slash live. Um, you can check out our events. We've got a couple more podcasts uh, this week, and we've also got uh, some events coming up on January, or excuse me, December 16th. We've got Women in Photojournalism here at uh, Adorama. What time is that? That's going to be at 6 o'clock, I believe. Yeah, is that right, o'clock. Chewy? Chewy's saying, yeah. Yep, that's correct. Okay. So 6 o'clock, and uh, you know, check out Adorama's event space on their website, adorama.com slash events. I think that's correct, unless it's adorama.nyc, one of those two. Um, Just Google that shit. <laughs> Google, Google that shit. <laughs> and at Photo Brigade on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, everybody, we'll see you again next time. Peter, thanks so much. For Thank coming. you, Robert. All right. It's been a pleasure. All right. Take care, everyone. Cheers. Cheers.